A lot of times my project ideas come from looking at pictures and this is the case with this one. In looking at different Starbucks lattes I saw this image with the leaves around the cup. So that's where I got my idea. Well this is a total experiment. I do not know how it's going to work, but this is a Dollar Tree uh, salad plate, so it cost a dollar twenty-five. So I guess that's what I risk wasting if this is, does not work. So I'm cleaning the back side with alcohol first. Let that dry. What I have here is Mod Podge Super High Shine Clear Acrylic Sealer. I could just paint gloss Mod Podge on, but I sure don't want to have any kind of brush strokes for this. So I figured spray would be better. I've got it elevated on a, a roll of tape and then I have it on a board so I can move it out of the way to work on other things while it dries. So, here we go. Woo wee, it says to work in a well ventilated space and I can see why. Okay, I want to sprinkle light amount, a light amount of my cinnamon and cloves on. I thought about using this sieve, but I tested it and boy, it just kind of pours right through it. So, I'm just gonna put tiny amounts in my fingers and roll and sprinkle. The idea here, this is going to be the plate that goes under my faux pumpkin spice latte and I want some spicy looking stuff as my first layer. When you're working on these glass plates uh, you have to think in reverse. So like if you were making a latte you'd put this on last, right? Well because we're working on the back side, we have to do everything that goes on last, we have to do that first. And now I will have to leave my space because that stinks. Woo wee! the background you could simply use paint and you could use acrylic paints the same way I'm about to use resin. Um, this resin pour is not going to be a dirty pour like I did on the plate for the pumpkin pie. 
Now I'm using uh, Amazing Clear Cast by Alumilite. It's a two part and this one, can't see where it says it, let's see. Clear, two part clear coating. And it takes about 10 hours for it to dry. So, in my measuring cups, I've mixed part A and part B equal amounts. I'm using 75 cc's. I did not use that much um, in the last pour. It was at uh, 's weird it has 25 cc's and then it has uh, anyway I'm at the 75 mark on both so what I want to do first is mix these together and you want to mix for about two minutes and you want to do it kind of slowly <clears throat> because you don't want air bubbles. Now in the last pour that I did on the back of the glass, I forgot a step that would have made it a lot easier for it to move. Um, when I did, I used Stone Coat Countertop Resin two years ago after we did our countertops uh, I also made some resin over pumpkins, like, you know, just the plastic pumpkins. I'll link that video in the description box. I think it's about halfway through when I do the pumpkins. It was a fall decorating video. But anyway, um, when you're doing something like this with a curved surface, you want to really coat your plate first just with some of the clear resin because it's going to help it move better when you put your colored resin on. A lot of air bubbles in this so see if we can get them out. You kind of need a heat gun to use resin. Um, hair dryer just doesn't always get quite hot enough and it also pushes too much air out versus the heat gun. The other thing about coating with clear resin first on this plate is it's got a little bit of a hump up and so it doesn't want to fall over the edge of the plate. All right now this is going to look a little weird because I'm going to be using my gloved hand to move this resin around. It's also pretty cool in my basement. The warmer it is, the better the resin moves. So before I actually use my gloved hand, I'm gonna use my heat gun just to warm up the resin a little bit. Now, when using resin, Acrylic paints are not your best choice. You really need dyes made for um, acrylic paint, or you can also use um, alcohol inks for little craft things like this. If you were doing a countertop project, man, no, you need to use the alcohol, um, you need to use the resin uh, dyes. I got mine at Stone Coat Countertops. I don't know why I wasted that cup. I could have just used this one. Oh well. Okay.
these dyes are very strong. It takes a little bit more of the white than either uh, oh, of the brown. <clears throat> and the way you tell your color, mix it in real well. What it looks like on the stick is what how opaque or translucent it's going to be. See, that's pretty opaque. Now, I don't really want uh, a ton of solid white. I'm going to try to get just one drop of this brown because I'm telling you, it is very concentrated. See? Very concentrated. And I'm going to take and just drop just a tiny little bit in that white because I wanted a little bit caramely instead of white. Ugh. These tiny little cups. And in this one I have very little resin. But I've got some orange alcohol ink. Right, and to get it more of a pumpkin y color, I'll take some of this brown. I'll drop that in there. Well, I don't know how pumpkin y that is, it looks a little bit more like a orange brown we'll see okay I'm gonna start with the orange and I'm gonna do a swirl Now, as this is moving, you need to make sure that you keep scraping the edge edges, the drips off. You will still have a little bit of drippiness on the edge, but I think it looks really cool. The last one I did looked really cool. I'm noticing this orangey thing that I made with the alcohol inks is much more translucent. So, I still want the glass to look like it's been covered. And we're just gonna let it do its thing. I'll come back in a couple of hours and scrape more drips off from around the edge. See through. Some of these little flaky pieces are because uh, I didn't really like the edge uh, where some of the resin had kind of rolled down. Now on the last plate I did, I liked it and I left it. Here's a picture of that. But for this one, I wanted the edges real clean. 
because I wanted some of that bronze and the brown to, sh to show and it was covering it up a little bit. So I just took a razor blade and just scraped the resin off around the outside edge. I wanted to point out that the fissuring that you see right there is from the alcohol ink. Adding alcohol to your resin uh, will give you that look, especially when you apply the heat to it, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, I decided that I did not want to leave this plate as translucent as it was, and so now I am adding the uh, pumpkin color that I used on the, uh, one of the lattes that I made, one of two, and uh, just applying it to the back of the plate. Now, I like to use a sponge um, for application so that you're sure not to get any brush strokes, but you kind of have to pop those bubbles a little bit, and it will give you a texture. After that, I applied uh, just some Deco Art antiquing wax just to tone it down a bit, and then I also did apply a sealer over that dead flat varnish, uh, Polyvine's dead flat varnish, a couple of coats. Mm -hmm.